In this video, I'm going to very openly and honestly share what it actually costs to live here in our cabin in Sweden. We're gonna go through how much we're paying for food each month, firewood, electricity, internet. Because I think that when you look at our lifestyle, I think you have an assumption of what it's going to be. But I think you're gonna be very surprised when you see the total amount of the budget. Me and my little family lives here in the north of Sweden in a very simple log cabin without running water. The cabin is placed in the middle of the forest without any neighbors or distractions from the rest of the world. But let's start off with going back a few years because my budget looked very different back then when I moved here 2018 compared to now. Because when I moved here I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't have a real income um, and I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. And I don't want you to do the same mistakes if you're aiming to do this kind of lifestyle. So I want to give my mistakes to you so you don't have to repeat them. Because when I moved here, I lived on the bare minimum. Um, there was a lot of porridge, it was a lot of cheap food. I didn't even own a car back then, which meant that every time I wanted to go grocery shopping, just buy food or whatever, I need to walk to the nearest town. And that was about seven hours. That could be charming if it's like summer and cozy. But if it's like minus 30 degrees Celsius and you have to walk all that way, buy a lot of groceries and then walk back, it was a tough lifestyle back then. Um, I'm happy I went through it, but I don't want to do it again. Uh, I cut all the firewood myself, so there's a lot of big differences from back then to now. But let's dive into the actual budget. I have my laptop with a spreadsheet and we're gonna go through it in detail what everything costs. And I've also listed all the things in US dollars, Euro and Swedish crowns. So I hope that makes sense and covers most of you guys. So the first thing is electricity. We pay around $95 a month, but it's very different from winter to summer. In the summer we pay around maybe $30 to $40, but in the winter time we pay around $150. So the middle of that would be around $95. And that's okay, but the prices on electricity are really rising, at least in Sweden. I don't know how it is for you, but I'm very happy we have this guy so we can actually keep warm in a more if like more efficient way, if that makes sense. It's extremely hot for me to sit this close to this one right now, but it looks cozy on video, so I thought, let's just do it. I'm sweating a lot, if I have to be honest. Uh, and then we have fiber optics, which we, we were very lucky to actually install this winter. So we only had it for around eight months now changed our life completely and I'm gonna do a video about that how we actually got fiber out here because we are living in the middle of nowhere so I never thought we would have good internet. I lived here without good internet for a few years and that was really tough no internet and being a youtuber. It's not a good match uh, but we pay around $49 a month for the fiber and then we have the absolute top speed it goes extremely fast. A thousand up and a thousand down. That's actually faster than I had uh, living in the city. So it's kind of funny that way. Uh, next big item is car. And we pay around two, $200 for that each month. And that is, uh, you know, uh, service and inspection and repairs and so on. That goes up and down depending on how the car is feeling. <laughs> but around 2000 a month is what it becomes in a year, if that makes sense. It's a really boring expense to have out here, but like I told you in the beginning, I lived without a car to start with. It's not that efficient. Um, I liked it because I saved a lot of money, but it doesn't really work out here. Like it's such a harsh climate and you need the car to move around. Like just going, buying groceries, you need a car. And like if I want to visit my family, they live around six or seven hours away from here. Bit tricky without the car. And then we have the gas for the car. <sighs> and that is around $450 a month. And that is also very much depending on what we're doing each month. But I took the last four months, and put them together and divided it by four. So $450 during the summer at least, that's what we paid a month. We sometimes a year go to Denmark and that's, you know, 14 hours from our cabin down to Denmark and then 14 hours to drive up again. Then we're burning a lot of gas. Um, so in those periods we burn way more, but I would say around $450 a month on gas. 
Then we have the house loan, because I don't technic I own the cabin, but since the bank own the majority of the cabin still, you know, I don't technically own it. Uh, so I'm paying around $200 a month to pay for the, the loan. What do you call it? Mortgage? Loan? I think you get what I mean at least. And then we have a bit more unique thing. We have something called a road fee. Uh, so we have to pay for using this, like the main road. <laughs> when I say main road, it's a like very small gravel road. Um, and what that covers, those $13 that we pay, that covers snow shoveling in the winter and also repairing the road, taking care of it. Just make sure it maintenance, basically. We don't get snow shoveling all the way up to the cabin. We still have 400 meters from our door down to that gravel road. But they're shoveling it whenever it's needed and sometimes we need to pay more and sometimes we need to pay less depending on how the winter season looks. And it's also a bit funny, we are paying the most amount uh, on this road. We are like five or six people that live here permanently on this road, even though we're very, very far apart. The longer you live in on the road, the more you pay. And we live at the very, very end of the road. There's no one after us. So we pay the most of everyone here. And it's still not a lot, it's $13 a month. Then we have dog food, that is around $200 a month. And I may be guessing that a lot of you is reacting on the price on that, I don't know. I've never owned a dog before the ones we have now. Uh, but you're gonna notice we are quite picky when it comes to food and what we're putting into our bodies in general. And that goes for our animals too. Like, why should they have bad quality food if we are splurging and having really high quality food? So we're paying around $2,000, oh, $200 a month for their food. Uh, very fancy dog food. I don't know if you have a dog, if you pay more or less. Then we have an item I almost didn't need to put on the list, or I, uh, technically I haven't. Clothing. But I just want to talk about it because I think a lot of you might ask about it. Like, why didn't you put clothing on the list? Because I don't really buy clothing. I've had this one for like 14 years and this t-shirt for at least 10. I don't really buy new clothing unless it breaks. Uh, and that, then at that point I buy new, of course, but I really wear them down, down first. Uh, so clothing is not really on my monthly budget. Of course, I spend a few dollars each year because I need to buy new things for stuff that breaks. But it's not a thing I put on my monthly budget. Uh, then we have health insurance, because I thought it could be smart to talk about since my audience is mostly American-based. And you guys have something called health insurance, but we don't in Sweden. We got that covered by paying taxes. So it's free healthcare. It's free healthcare. That was tricky to say. Uh, we have free, uh, go to school is free, healthcare is free. So there's no number to put on that. I, of course, pay it by paying taxes, but it's not a specific healthcare insurance, if that makes sense. Then we have house insurance, the, the cabin, and that is around $50 a month, just to make sure that if it burns down or something happens, we are covered. Then we have garbage, which means someone actually coming and emptying our bin. Um, I lived without that in the beginning too, but that was also very, very tricky. Um, so now we're paying around $15 a month. And that is based on every third month, but every month it's $15. Again, not that much for someone just coming and picking it up. And then we have a big item called firewood. And that is also a big question in the comment field every time I'm posting a video about this lifestyle. Um, since we don't have like, we don't have any radi radiators or anything, we have a air heating pump. I don't know what the translation it is. We call it Luftwärmepump in Swedish. And that is the thing that is like pumping our electricity bill in the winter as well, because this is enough if we keep it going. But if we're leaving this place, we need to have that one running to at least not make everything freeze in here. And it might eat away, but yeah. <laughs> so that is firewood we spend around 70 dollars 70 blah. Firewood we spend around $75 a month. But it's not a monthly cost, we pay once a year, but divided up, divided up on 12 months, it's $75. In the beginning, like I talked about, my budget looked very different. Cut all my firewood myself. But back then I didn't have a job in that sense, so I had a lot of time. Today I have a full-time job with YouTube and my podcast and newsletter and everything. 
so I don't have time. Funny enough, living out here, I have less time. Um, so then I would rather pay someone, a uh, neighbor around here actually, uh, comes with the firewood, delivers, delivers it to the lawn, dumps it here and we stack it in our woodshed. Nowadays I'm happily paying for it. I cut down maybe one or two trees a year myself just because I actually enjoy it and it's a good physical activity. Uh, but we don't actually need it. Now it's just a bit of a luxury to actually get someone to deliver it to you. And I think, why not? Like, I earn more, I actually earn something now, uh, not just more, uh, so I can actually treat myself or our family with that. Before I share how much we're actually spending on food, that's easily the biggest item, and I know there's a lot of questions about that. I also know there's a lot of questions about how we actually made the transition from city to cabin life. How are we able to live here and pay for all of this, and how was it possible for stepping out of the norm, not working 9 to 5 anymore? If you're curious about that, I have some good news. I've actually made my very own ebook called Find Your True North, your roadmap to creating a life you don't need vacation from. And this is not just an ebook. See, that's a toolbox full of my very best tools, challenges, and life hacks. Everything I've learned transitioning from city to cabin life. It's packed to the brim of just good information that I wished I had when I first started this journey myself. It's not just the ebook, it's actually also a community connected to the ebook that is only available for people that have bought the ebook. And there's hundreds of people in there already that have bought it, connecting with each other, learning from each other, and just growing together. I've worked so hard on this ebook, and I think it's a really good thing. So if you want to check it out, link down below. Now let's move on to the food budget. Drum roll, please. <laughs> we spend... Okay, first I need to make clear that we're, we're prioritizing really good food. Uh, that is not defending this at all, it's just a thing I'm happily sharing. We're only buying organic food um, as locally as we possibly can, and that means the price goes up. And I will happily pay a lot of money for good food, because what we eat and what we put into our bodies is not only affecting us, but our future kids and our grand... you know, it goes on for generation. And Christine is really nerdy about those things, and I'm just listening to her recommendations. Um, so we spend a lot of money on food because it makes sense. In the beginning when I lived here alone and did have my own salary in that sense and had to live off porridge and noodles and I ate a lot of noodles. <sighs> but back then I really couldn't prioritize good food because I didn't have a proper salary. But now I do and that's the thing I want to spend money on. I don't want to spend it on new clothing or fancy cars or trips. I want to spend it on me, like, <laughs> that sounds selfish maybe, but of course I want to prioritize my own health and my family's health. So we're spending around a thousand dollars a month on food. Uh, and that is just eating home, we're never, you know, we live in the middle of nowhere, so <laughs> we can't really go out to eat, uh, we don't have a restaurant to go to. We have a small cafe that we sometimes go to in Östersund, it's a really cozy eco cafe, organic cafe. So we go there maybe a few times a year, but that's it. Uh, but a thousand dollars, that's a lot of money to spend on food. But again, I would happily do it. So what is the total amount of this whole list? It's $2,427. Is it more or less than you thought it would be? Because to me it's more than I expected, if I have to, <laughs> to be completely honest. And this is not covering my company expenses or luxury items because I pay, you know, for camera gear, laptop, uh, some services I use to make these videos, and luxury items like um, vitamins and minerals or uh, the streaming services we have to watch movies. Because those really don't belong here, I think. Uh, you don't need those things to live in a cabin in the forest, but it's nice to have. I love to watch a movie in the evening, I'm human as everyone else. But if you want to dig deep, like, even deeper, learn even more. There is a link to my ebook. There is a video to my simple living morning routine where you also learn how to, you can get access to my guided meditation that I put together. And this video is apparently YouTube recommended to you. Thank you for watching this video. We'll talk soon again. Bye. <laughs> this is so hot. <sighs>